A program like this is meant to build somebody's life. And that's why God gave us the team that it is blissful marriage. If you succeed in everything in life and fail in marriage, you have not succeeded. That is why you need to pay attention this evening. And today's topic says, know the man you call your husband. Know the man you call your husband. Today we will somehow measure on the women. Tomorrow, like that, and Sunday, we just keep on building everybody together. So, know the man you call the husband. Sometimes, the survey was taken that in 1986, about 2.5 million marriages were separated in the U.S. And on investigation, they discovered that most of the marriages, most of the people married total strangers, people they never knew, but they lived together. And I can tell you that there are some marriages too in Nigeria where people are married, but they are strangers to one another. They don't know anything about their spouse. The man does not know the woman, the woman does not know the man. Um, an ex arm robber was to marry and he found a girl of his love and told her, I love you and I want to marry you. I have changed. I have repented. I truly the man was born again. But I want to tell you my past. I was an arm robber. I now ask her, is there any secret about you that I need to know? And the lady said, no, there was no secret. And I said, okay, let's go ahead. But the man almost desired to go to the bathroom with the wife. But wife will refuse. Uh, so the man kept bothering, what is the problem? Why is my wife not allowing me to bed with her in the same bathroom? He gave the man concern, but as an obedient husband that he was, he paid attention. But you know, there's a child in every man. That child in every man is the curiosity that is in the man. So one day she entered into the bathroom, he peeped through the hole of the door. To see, was well, there anything that my wife is hiding? Lo and behold, the woman does not have a natural hair. All the hair chemical had chopped them all. So what she now wore is what is a wig to cover the hair. And the man thought it was there. Before she finished betting, the man had packed all his things and ran out of the house. It sounds very simple. But how can you marry a stranger, somebody that you do not know? The man made effort to know, but it was not revealed to him. And up to date, brethren, there are people who are married and they do not know that their spouses have a particular bank account somewhere. I counseled two people that I respected when I was in Zafara. They are short, they don't use earring, they don't paint, they don't make up. So we assume they're very serious. And I know the man to be very committed. When he got married, he even married late, but at least he got married. And when they were having issues, when they told me what they were passing through, and they were my neighbors, the woman said, the man used to beat me. And they are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And to the point that beating me, the man will be matching my stomach with his leg. I looked at the man. I said, bro, the way you pray like this, he put his head on the ground. Then Oscar keep talking, and the woman told me, said, that is why I didn't want to reveal everything about myself to him. She had three accounts. She said one particular account, she opened it when she was still in her father's house before she got married. He said she can't reveal her account to such a man. Now, these are things that were having and passing through, and why many prayers are not answered. And people are jumping from one church to the other because they don't know the Lord. They have not spoken to God. They don't know what is happening. Now, many people entered into marriage expecting some things, but they're getting the opposite of their expectations in marriage. In the place of a better marriage, they are getting 
bitter marriages. Everybody expects that if you start something, you will progress and become better. But instead of becoming better, some are becoming bitter. They are becoming what? They are becoming what? They are becoming bitter in their marriages. The Bible says that he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from who? From the Lord. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22. Proverbs 18, 22. He that findeth a wife. So, if you are talking about finding, meaning that it didn't say he that picked a wife. Get the English word. Not he that picked a wife. If you are going to find a thing, meaning that that thing is hidden, you are going to go looking for it, you are going to go searching for it, you are going to pray about it, you are going to look for direction where that thing is. So any man who passes the hurdle of looking for a wife and eventually find one of his choice, the Bible says such a man. What has a man found? A good thing. And what has he obtained from the Lord? Obtained favor of the Lord, or from the Lord. But reverse is what we are seeing today. What we are seeing today, he that finded a wife, finded a good thing, and obtained favor from the Lord. But the opposite is what many are getting in their marriages. In the place of good thing, people are getting bad things. Why favor has been replaced with fever? He that finded a good wife, finding a good thing, and obtained favor from the Lord. In the place of favor, what has people found? Fever. And I, I put in bracket here, marital fever. A lot of people are suffering from marital fever. And let me tell you that malaria fever, typhoid fever, is nothing compared to marital fever. Marital fever is more dangerous than typhoid fever. And when you are suffering from marital fever, it takes only God to heal you. No injection, no tablets can heal you. Now, in recent time, they say chloroquine and other tablets are resistant to malaria. They can't cure malaria until you combine all of this. Now, if you like, combine both typhoid and malaria fever in treating marital fever, you will not get it until you return back to God. Until you return back to God. You need to go back to God because God is the one that laid the foundation of marriage and he's the one that gives peace in marriage. Now, this is the reason for this program to bring complete happiness and contentment into our marriages. That's why you need to open your heart. That's why you need to pay attention. Now, how do we go about this? In the concern of this program, how do we become happy? Because you're talking about blissful marriage, you're talking about complete happiness, you're co talking about complete contentment, because what we see today in the world, we have people in the world today who are either praying to be married or wishing they have a better husband, or they have a better wife than one they have presently, as if the search continues and continues. But religion will not allow anybody to say, I'm not satisfied in my marriage. I want to have a change. The Bible, the religion does not permit it. It's only in Islam that you're permitted to go out of your marriage and pick another one. But the Christian religion does not permit us to change wife like we change the rapper and the rest of them. So what do we see? People who feel they are not contented. But the Bible, the word of God, had made it possible for all of us, people of God, to be contented, to be satisfied. When we follow the principles of God, when we follow God's instruction about marriage, because God is the only one that has the manuscript, the manual for marriage. If you follow the marriage, the manual of the marriage, which is the Bible, we will succeed in our marriages. Now, remember the topic? Knowing the man you call your husband. Now, number one way to make this impossible is knowing slash understanding of your spouse. When you know, when you understand your spouse, you will go a long way in having peace, particularly your husband. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. The Bible says husbands should dwell with their wife according to understanding. Some versions say according to knowledge. Likewise, their husband dwell with them according to what? Knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being held together of the grace of life, that ye are prayers, do what? Be not hindered. Most times, when I counsel people, I read this verse. Some people say, you mean this is in the Bible? I say, open your own and read. 
that marital conflict can stop answer to prayer. Is it written here? No, talk to me, church. Is it there? When you disagree with your wife, when there is no peace between the two of you, God leaves your house and moves to another house. Because God, the Holy Spirit, cannot stay in a house that is full of argument. So he needs peace for prayers not to be hindered. Do you want to make progress? The Bible says, if two of you shall agree concerning a matter. Have you ever agreed on a matter? Or there's conflict over, over matters of your family? The Bible says prayers can be hindered. But back to what we are saying, that has to do with understanding. That has to do with what? Understanding. Women in the house. The man that you call your husband. Do you know him? You just know him as an engineer, as a builder, as a medical doctor, as a chartered accountant. Do you know him? Maybe more than being a pastor, more than a lawyer, maybe a marketer, a businessman, a launderer. Is there any other thing you know your husband about? Have you taken time to study him? Can you explain? Can you tell people that this is the man I marry? Or you say, I don't know. Or some will even say, I don't care to know. He can be anything. Now, you are not just in a home to produce children for the man. You are meant to live with the man. You are meant to be happy with the man. You are meant to satisfy yourself. In marriage, this is what God has desired. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to what? Knowledge. Can you jump to verse 1 and let's see something? Verse 1, quickly. Oh, that's the, okay. Now, that, that verse 7 say, likewise who? Verse 1 is saying what now? So there's likewise for the two. There's likewise for who and who? Pastor John, just come over. Pastor John, yeah, bring them up. Yeah, the pastors with the wife, come up. Thank you very much. Like, go to verse 7 again and see. Verse 7. What is there? Can someone read? Go to verse 1. What do you see there? So there's likewise for Mom E. Watts, and there's likewise for Dr. E. Watts. Three of us. There's likewise for Brother Uche, and there's likewise for Sister Henrietta. There's likewise for Sister Zenab, and there's likewise for Brother Agile. There's likewise for me, and there's likewise for my wife. So there's likewise for everybody. Likewise, wife, be what? in subjection to who? To your own husband, that if any obey not the war, they also may, without the war, be won by the conversion, conversation of who? Of the wife. Verse 2. Why they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear? But do you think women of our generation, they have any fear in them? No, they don't. But those in church have fear. But those in church, they do what? Uh, those in church, they do what? They have fear, but not all of them. Not all. Hallelujah. Yes. What happened to what we are reading now? Can we? Yes. Go to where we are reading. Move to verse 3 now. Now, who is adoring? Let it not be that outward adoring of plating the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of our power, go to verse 4, then verse 5. Go to verse 5. It says, For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who did what? Who trusted God? I don't understand. Be in subjection unto who? Their own, Their own husband. Six. Even as who? Obeyed who? Yeah. Calling him who? Lord. Calling him who? Lord. But in this generation, have you seen women calling their husband Lord? So women want to turn their husband to handbags, to houseboys, to people that will carry their bags, to people that will wash their toilet, to people that will throw their sanitary pad away. If there's a spirit in you as a woman, that try to dominate your husband, it is not a good spirit. 
It is not a Christian spirit. It is not the spirit of the Almighty God. The spirit, the feminine spirit, the feminine nature is meant to be submissive, to submit to a husband, to follow a husband. How many of us know that the air condition and the fridges we have, the strength, the strength of the compressors are made after the strength of a horse. Like when you have a fridge, you say one horsepower, two horsepower, three horsepower, and five. And just like that, they made after the You know, the horse is a very strong animal used for battle. But have you seen that the horse is trained in such a way? The horse is tamed in such a way that even when a little boy holds the horse by the rope, what does the horse do? It followed. That is what is expected in marriage. That even a man that you're more educated, the man that you're older than marries you, you're supposed to follow the man. Because the Bible says, the man is the head. And you are the neck. The man is the head. And we must accept that the man truly is the head. When you want to drag leadership with a man, spiritually, you should be, you, you be charged for what? That is a victor. When you are charging somebody for trusting, eh? what is it? Trustable felony, yeah? Eh? Trustable uh -huh. But what is trustable felony? What is it? What is it associated with? Yeah. When you try to overthrow a sitting president in marriage, there is marital treasonable felony, MTF, and is a very grievous offense that if you allow to continue for a very long time, just pay attention on this to what I'm telling you, it matures to witchcraft. It matures to what? And once a woman succeeds in overthrowing her husband, the man may still be there, but he will become a babysitter. And with time, the chemical, the chemistry of the woman will change from the normal feminine chemistry to masculine chemistry. Her voice will change. Even if you don't, if you're not careful, if you touch her palm, her palm becomes strong because she had left where God kept her and moved into where God has not kept her. She began to carry the load that was not meant for her because she refused the instruction of the word of God. So I wanted to write that in the law, or the by law, eh? the marital law of the King's Palace Church, there is section uh, 27, number one, MTF, marital treasonable felony, is punishable by lack of love and witchcraft, which you must withdraw and repent of, and you have an executive pardon and freedom from such sin. It sounds funny, but that's what people are passing through. No woman should ever desire to be a man. You are made in such a way with the body chemistry that you should be a woman and remain a woman and not be a man. Respect your husband and enjoy true womanhood. That's what God had made. And the Bible says that Sarah called her husband who? Call her husband who? Hiding your face will not solve your problem. It's only calling your husband Lord that will solve your problem. The Bible says, you are daughters of Sarah. As long as you do well. So the implication is that somebody can be in church when everybody is singing, Abraham is her father. God does not see the woman and the daughter of Sarah because she does not do well. That's what the Bible says. Oh, do you do well? He said, I still do well, and I'm not afraid. But I must be. It is after this. Look at verse 7. Likewise, in verse 1. Now, verse 7 says, Likewise, ye husband dwell with them according to what? Knowledge. His own version say, according to understanding. Now, why men are told to live with their wife according to understanding? Let me tell you. In Africa, particularly, a young girls, listen to me. When you see a man that likes you before the man talks to you. Do you know or you do not know? Eh? Eh? But do you know that a man, a girl may like the man and the man may not know? Eh? 
But there's this natural intelligence, feminine intelligence, that is given to women to understand a man who is interested in her, interested in her much more than the man. Now that is why there's an assumption here that men have been told to live with their wife according to understanding. Why? Because it's assumed that the women already know the man before you accepted to marry him. And during courtship, you're sensitive enough to study the man, to know him. There are certain actions we may put in place. Here, after our part, there are some persons are cancelled. She said she just wanted to try the man. And um, she told the man, the man said, I love you. The man is overseas. She just told the man, I want to do business. I need some money. And the man stopped calling her again. The man doesn't want to give money. So another one, he just told the man, say, I'm owing somebody, I need money to pay. The man stopped calling. Now, there are this lady, three men showed interest in her, they want to marry her. Very wealthy man, the other one working, the other one not too, no, he doesn't have too much money, but he's a very caring man. So the lady pretended to be sick and said, I am sick, I can't go to anywhere. The rich man said, oh, I'm very sorry, I am busy. I can't leave my business. I'm busy. Please, I will see you when I come back. The other one send something. Say, ah, please, uh, I just brought this. I'll be on my way. I don't have that. But the other one came around. Who does not have money? Stayed with her, encouraged her. For three days, she was in this pretense for three days. And gradually, she was recovering in the pretense. And finally, she told when he finished, he said, I have recovered and I can go to work. She told the parents, among these three people, the one that loved me, that can marry, is the one that created time to come and stay with me. Not the other one that say is too busy. Because women, what they want in marriage is security and time. Women want security and what? Time. Any man that will not give a woman time is wasting his time. So women look, and that, the woman did that, and she succeeded in getting the right person. So that's why the Bible assumes that the women already know their husband and now encouraging you as a woman to try now and do what? Understand the person that you are living with. The person that you call your husband. The person that you call your husband. Understanding in marriage cannot be overemphasized is very, very important. Very, very important. If you like it, you're gone. Let's see Proverbs 21, 16, before we come back to 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 5. But Proverbs 21 and verse 16. Proverbs 21 and verse 16. Look at it. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain where? In the congregation of the dead. And another scripture says, a woman that lives in pleasure is dead while she's still alive. So there are two classes of people that can be dead. A woman who lives in pleasure, who does not have value for God. She may be alive, she may be gorgeous, but the Bible sees her as a dead person. And here, the man, the woman, that wandered out of what? The way of understanding. Shall remember where? In the congregation of the dead. You choose not to understand the man you have married. You take the man for granted. Oh, you will be grounded. Oh, you will have issues. Because it is not the way bitter call a sound in the mouth that it turns to the tongue. If you are chewing it, a child by your side will think you are eating cracker biscuits. But give it to the child. The child will say, throw it away. And that's how many people are throwing their marriages out of their mouth. There is no brethren because the world in which we are is not the same way we met it. The world is running with speed and some people are being left behind. If you choose not to walk in understanding, you'll be considered a dead man. Because the Bible says, you will remain where? In the congregation of the dead. You may be married, but your marriage may not be working. And the reason for this seminar is to make every marriage to work. Every person must be humble. You see, sometimes when I see men talking to their wife the way they want, say, I'm the ogre of the house. Ogre, be careful. Because you are on top of grace. If your wife set trap for you, you will come from grace to where? 
to grasp. And these days, it is women of old that may allow their husband to fall from grace to grass. Some women have moved their apartment close to the rock. So that when you are falling from the grace, you will land where? And when you land on the rock, what will happen to you? The brain will be broken, your bone will be shattered. You say, yes, let him go. And let him die. But old women of old, he can allow you to fall from grace to grass. If there's no food, you'll be eating the grass or the food come. But this one that have moved the apartment to a place where there's rock. Once you fall on the rock, you are gone. And once you are gone, they go over to another man. So you must be careful. The same thing that is applicable to men is also applicable to women. Be careful the way you treat your husband. Because I said here, um, as you keep going, the man that you called your husband today was a stranger yesterday that was turned into a husband through love. I said the man you called your husband today was who? A stranger yesterday. Please, is it true or false? Eh? Is it not true? Uh, look at my wife. The first day I saw her was the same day she saw me. But that was true or false? I never knew her before. I only heard God say this. But anything about her, I do not know. God said this is your wife. But he didn't reveal 100% who she was to me. So the person that you call your husband today was actually a stranger that you never know. It's like buying a cloth in the market. You bought the material. If you don't have a good tailor, will the cloth fit you? Eh? So the marriage is, you need to make. They say, as a man makes his bed, so you don't want lie on it. So people talk. Say, if this marriage will end, let it end. Who will suffer if it end? All of you will suffer. But you know that suffering are different percentages. Who will have the larger percentage? Eh? Who will have the largest percentage? God forbid. Between a man and a woman, who has second-hand value? Eh? Who has second-hand value? Now, listen to me. Some of the messages today may be bitter and painful. Uh, last time as I was traveling, as we passed local, before Murutala Bridge, I saw a signboard. And I took them to read the signboard. It did remind me of a young pastor in Sokoto. He did mean a pastor, but he had not been allowed to use the pulpit to preach. Then one of the days, he was privileged to be given the pulpit. And he came up and said, the topic of my message is, the truth is bitter. Now, the signboard in that local jar road, after Morotala Bridge, is written, truth is bitter association. Truth is bitter association. And I was wondering, who are these people? There must be something that is being done in their community that they don't like, they don't like. Maybe the traditional rulers or the leaders of the committee. For them to come together and say that their truth is bitter association. There are people who want to speak the truth at all times. This evening may not be too convenient, too sweet for somebody, but we are into the theater of marriage to cut off tumors, mental tumors. To cut off what? <laughs> cut off what? <laughs> to cut off emotional tumors. Tumors that have grown in the marriage. Tumors that have grown in your emotion. And it's going to be done with sharp knife so that it can be free. It's bitter, but you must hear it. And you must swallow it. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you want to swallow it. I want to show all of you one video that my wife took of Sister Favor. Favor doesn't like taking malaria drug. I told her to use her hand to kill all the mosquitoes in Kujia. But when she's taking it, you think that something is wrong. So I told my wife to cover her on video. You almost suspect that she has, I mean, she, she has chronic kongbanje. The way she dance and misbehave and dance and all of that. But she said the spirit had left her. I said, okay, let's wait for another malaria. Hallelujah. But you must swallow it. You must accept it. You know, it sounds strange. Because nobody marries his brother. Can anybody marry his brother? So we all met as strangers. Even if you are from the same community. Do you know yourself? You only know that this one is from Okoro's house. The other one is from Okonkwo's house. But what happens in the night? You do not know. 
you are from the same village, but do you know them? Do you know their roots? Do you know their history? That is why in current marriage, they ask people. Before now, when AS marry AS, and they are having children, and the children are having sickle cell, anemia, what do you think village people will say? That the man is having abandoned children, is he not? And they all die. Meanwhile, sickle cell. When a woman has small pelvis that the child cannot come out, in the process of giving birth, the woman dies. What do they call her? Ogbanje. That is why God said it is not Ogbanje. What they need is cesarean section. And those who have small pelvis small, should stop eating plenty sugar, plenty bon vita, so that the child will not grow and the child can still come out through the normal canal. Are you following? But people do not know. Somebody will take one thick bon vita, one big cup. It's just there are some people that, how they drink bon vita? They bring hot water. They carry the cup. They don't use food. They shake it inside. Shake it inside. Look at the remaining one. It's almost going half. They turn it. Put spoon inside. Test it. They carry sugar. They say, I like thick tea. What you are liking is death. You are sentencing yourself to where? To death. But do you understand what I'm saying? And then people who use cup of bone bitter, they shake it like this. Huh? They bring tin of milk, open it, they do like this. Ah, uh, what thing? Ah, uh, they will not tell you, what about Joe considered, that this milk of this is not a fool. It is not true. There's no tin milk that comes half. You are the one who pours it. And some people have found it, after pouring the one in the tea, they will still suck some in the mouth. In the name, they're using their tongue to clean the tin of milk. They put it back, and the thing is going. Two things are happening. They are wasting their resources, and they are causing danger to their health. So when the child becomes big, and she cannot deliver, and some of them will still come back to tell us that we have faith. Daddy, we have faith. We can deliver. If you come to me, I will tell you, go for CS so they don't kill the child. Because you didn't obey. You never obey the law of moderation when you are pregnant. How do you not come to excite faith overnight? The first way to excite the faith is to make the child grow in your womb. If not, go for CS. Don't deceive yourself. Knowledge is important. You must go for antinata and learn what to eat and what not to eat. It's very, very important. There are people today who are telling us they have faith. They are actually walking in ignorance. Did the Bible not say that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God? What have you heard and you're having faith? The one the doctor told you, did you apply it? He said, leave these doctors alone. My mother didn't go anything. Yeah, but is it what your mother is eating now that you're eating? You ate two packs of hungry man uh, indomie. Did your mother know what is indomie? <laughs> you drank kunu. You see kunaya, he said, give me. You see soya miko, he said, give me. Some people even, what they wear that there's what they call kunu mods. Kunu mod is that they bring kunu and put mod inside and drank all. You drank pap in the morning. You drank kunu mod in the afternoon. Then in the night, you now drank chapman. Chapman is a combination of Sprite, Fanta, and Zobu. Okuyanu. Is it not? And that's what you have taken in the night. Whatever name you give it, all of them have sugar content and you're punishing yourself. You're punishing yourself. Now, First King chapter three, verse five to nine. First King chapter three, five to nine. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, "Ask what I shall give thee." Now, uh, Sister Amara, if God appeared to you now or in the night after today, I say, Amara, what do you want? What do you really? What is the thing that? What do you want in your life? What is the best thing you want? Don't waste my time, oh. Eh? Eh? You want what? Eh? Table. You want to serve God more. Speak the truth. Emmanuel, stand up. <laughs> what will you take God? Eh? See, eh? The religion is a very strong thing now. Eh? what do you want? After you're God's in Mario. Quick, quick. Eh? Money. Thank you. Come and take my hand. This is a true Urubu girl, Nigerian girl. Stand here. Because the man come. Quick, quick, quick. Don't waste time. What if God appear now? What do you want? Shop. Job. Take your hand. Stand here. 
Uh, Isaiah, come. What do you want? Mama Favor, follow. Come. Quick, quick, quick. What you? you need money. Take hand. Money. Take hand. Thank you. Ruth, come. What do you want? You don't know what you want. Huh? Huh? Eh? Want to be sponsored to airport? Abroad. Me, I don't support small guys going to abroad in their first degree, second degree. Because many of them will go and backslide. You hear me? You go to abroad with your husband or second degree. And tell me if your father agrees to send you. But my hand is not there. Mm -hmm. You see, we have seen things. One bishop in Enugu, the son, when came back with the earring, with a cap at the back. He said, I don't want to say it. Try saying. And that's the end of his Christianity. <laughs> Listen to me. If I have my way, my children, ask Amara. She did just one to three in my house. Because I sent their belly to a boarding house. I think just two of it. Iroma from just one. But I said, i from SS1. So I can't take any child overseas to go and lose the child. Moreover, many parents do not even know that once your child has gone to boarding school, you have lost the child to the society. The child becomes a visitor. I'm sure we know in academic something. You have a, a visitor to the university. It's different from the vice chancellor. Am I correct? A visiting consultant is different from the resident doctor. You don't see him always. So your child becomes a visitor only during the holidays. They come and spend three weeks with you, and they go back. Even at a particular time in their life, they said there's extra lesson, so they won't come home. What do you do? You allow them to stay there. You, both of you, you visit and they visit. Every month when you have the time, you visit them during the, And they visit you during the holiday, and they go. They will now get admission into the university. What have they become? How many months is in a semester? Eh? Four months, Abby. How many months is how many months in a term? Eh? Three months. Semester, how many semesters do we have in a session? Two semesters. So it's more than three months, depending on the universities. You understand? Now, they just did it in such a way. When the child is in secondary school, three months in the school. And the child grows to go to university, they take more months from you. And as soon as the child finishes, what is the next thing to do? Use service. After you service, what is the next thing? Is he going to work in your house? Dr. Meshi, did you employ Melody? Even if you employ her, when the husband come and carry her from your house, he will come and carry. So we must know these things and know it well. Know it and know it well. And God will help us. Thank you very much, money people. Go back to your seats. You will have money. Amen. Now, Emmanuel and Amara, I did not condemn you. What you say is good. But my prayer is that let it be that it is the truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. And God will grant your hand desire. Of course, they may have grown spiritually to desire to serve God the more and to do what? Eh? And, and, and to, to acquire that wisdom. Now, let's go ahead. The Lord said, Ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in all presence of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, and thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Wow. Solomon is a wise boy. He just explained to God that to get the throne of Israel is not a cheap thing. You know, when the family of Umar Musayya Radua, the mother, an old age woman, and the members of the family, traveled to Abiyokuta to thank Obasanjo for making their son president. People didn't know what that meant. Because to be president of a nation is not a cheap article. You are the one that have the yam and have the knife. Whosoever he caught is the one that will eat. You are the god of that nation. So Solomon said, for creating this kindness for my father, and you didn't allow me to die, but you allowed me to go on and even sit on the throne of my father, I'm very grateful to you. And it happened this day in my life. Verse 7. Verse 7, please. 
And now, oh Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king, king instead of David my father. And I'm but a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in. It's. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people who thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. You see, most Solomon acknowledged the greatness of the people. He didn't despise them. You know, when we get married, sometimes we look at loophole, look at where the girl is coming from, look at her father's background, whether she, they are from a rich family or not from a rich family. We despise them and talk to them anyhow. Or maybe you that you are married as a woman, you come in to say, is that after all, what do you have before I'm married? He has something before he married him. He has himself. When he was not alive, he wouldn't have married him. He has what? Himself. He has himself. And he's the one that you married. You didn't marry well. You saw him and you liked him. So you must appreciate. You must see something good in your spouse and celebrate him. Now, Solomon discovered that these people are very great and they are great people. Then he now say, give therefore their servant what? An understanding heart to judge their people. That I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this? That is so great are people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, the first trial came for Solomon. Two women. He came from marriage. Two women. I was wondering, where were their husband? That two of them would go and sleep in one place. Is it one man that married them? I don't know. The Bible didn't tell us. But that's to show you that the first problem that Solomon saw was marriage to problem. One woman was very careless, as we still have some careless women today. She was sleeping as she rolled over her child. And what happened to the child? As she was a very smart woman. She quickly woke up, as soon as she saw that her own died, she carried that child and put it in the bosom of the other woman and carried the other woman's blood and put it on her side. And that should also show that two of them are careless. You, madam, when they are carrying your child by your side, why won't you wake up? What kind of sleep are you sleeping? Some people used to sleep with their mouth open. They do hand like this. And they're sleeping. Their child is crying. And all of that, you begin to wonder what is happening. But of them were careless. But if you ask me, the other woman whose child died, was she emotionally attached to her child? Eh? If she was, do you know the first thing that would have happened? The woman would have started crying. Oh, my baby is dead. Oh, somebody help me. Somebody help me. But she didn't do that. She just was not hurting. After all, the children, how is that? Uh, not the children. I'll carry this one and give my husband. You mean the children my husband wants? Husband, be careful. Those of you who are too concerned about children, a woman can give you a child and drop all of them and move on. Two of us. I was canceling a woman on phone. When you finish, I was afraid. The woman, her husband died January last year. He said, These children are misbehaving. You know? I want to tell them that I'm not the one that killed their father. He said, if I try what I can try, they don't. He said, I will drop them where they belong to. She mentioned her father's house. He said, I will go back to my father's house. I said that the woman was very serious. So women don't have any affinity with their children. There's no attachment. So they don't think, say, how can this woman leave her child? Okay, have you not seen people who left children? Eh? Have you not seen? Oh, yes, so oh, many. There are cases that were settling. Somebody said, my mother left us when I was six months and go and marry another person. And eventually the person she married after some time had died. And the boy had grown and become a big boy. So the boy is finding it difficult to take the mother because he never saw her as a mother. She never treated him as one. It's adversity that now brought her back. When you are doing something, remember that there's tomorrow. So men who are, who are crying about children, <laughs> be careful though. Because some women are not attached. Likewise, some men, they don't have any uh, affection for children. They can continue and say, you can go to her. They can get a demonic woman who says, all oh, this is your wife, and kill all of them. I'll give, another, I'll give you another one. And the foolish man will kill all the wife and children. And just do small cry. Hey, hey, hey. They say, oh, God, sorry. He said, I can't bear it. He can't bear it, too. <laughs> it's just a drama. He said, it's just what? Just doing drama. And after three months, you move on. Someone said, I'll move on with my life. And even if you remove to move on, if you come to church, we will cancel you to do what? To move on. And you must move on. And in case if you do not know, the new prayer system is that if one partner dies, the other one must continue. We we'll ask you to kneel down. Lift up your right hand. You'll do it. You say, Father, you say, Father. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Every soul I say, every soul Between me and my late wife or late husband, and let them say, in the name of Jesus, say, in the name of Jesus. We separate it, say, we separate it. Say, free, you are free. So when I say, no spirit that look like the other former person should come and trouble the other one. In the name that is above every name. Everyone say, amen. Say, amen. Say, sister, wake up. You can go and marry. And tomorrow, we announce that sister, okay, Chuku, God had comforted her. Or her late husband. And God had given her another man. And today she had come to bless her marriage. Every woman will run. I say, hey, my sister, thank God for you. What has happened to the other one? They have forgotten him. That's why they say, a man who wander out of the way will remain where? In the congregation of the dead. And life moves on. Life moves on. Oh, you think the whole world will stay because you die? Eh? The reason for mortuary is to keep you so that activities can go on. That is the work of mortuary. So that you don't affect anybody's what? Appointment. They say, stay there for, let us plan for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we sit together? Now, when that case came before Solomon, Solomon said, Madam, I want you to tell me the truth. And the other woman said, Oga, can't you look that the child looks like me? She said, it's true. But she was lying. No? The child is my own. The other woman, that they carried her own child, couldn't even talk. So Solomon said, God, this wisdom, this understanding heart you have given me, the time has come to apply it. At that time, there was no DLA machine. What they have was sword LA. What they have was what? The sword to cut them, let the blood come out. We see it physically. So Solomon said, bring me the sword. See, two of you are not agree. We don't want to, anybody to be cheated. Say, my servant, the dead child, divide into two. The living child, divide into two. Give them half, half so that everybody will rest. The woman who killed her child, he said, oh God, God bless you. You did well, let's have, have, have. Everybody go and rest. Solomon said, if you are the owner of the living child, you will not want to kill the child. You have proved to the world that the child is not yours. Give it to the other woman. And everybody said, we have never seen such a wisdom. Why? Because Solomon asked for what? Asked for what? And look at that thing I asked for God. The Bible says, the speech pleased the Lord. Anytime a woman is trying to know the husband, the God of heaven is always happy. He said that Solomon had asked this thing. Look at verse 11. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself, there are common things that people ask for. Like favor, like who? Ngozi madu, mommy favor. And we again, now ask for money. He said, you have not asked for long life? Then I have asked for what? Riches for yourself. No, I have asked the life of the enemy. But has asked for thyself. Understanding to design judgment. Understanding gives you the key to everything. Give you the key to who? If you understand your husband, you will be happy with him. You'll be what? No, talk to me. Now, even if you are not happy, ask me, I'm your pastor. Women, are you protesting? So answer me now. Hey. All right, let me continue the injection. The key to a blissful marriage is in knowing your spouse. Don't forget that the man that is your husband today was a stranger yesterday. The man is not your father, not your brother, not an uncle, but a total stranger, torn husband, true love. Stop taking things for granted. Study and understand him, and he shall be well with you. And number two, learn to live with him. Find out what does your husband have? What does he have passion for? If your husband has passion for anything, don't fight that thing. Rather, give his, your support, your total support to it. I've seen women whose husbands are pastors. They say, I don't believe in their calling. How is it that you don't believe in his calling? I tried to settle a case here. 
a man has a ministry and they're prospering. Now suddenly, the woman woke up that she too has a ministry. And her own ministry will not be in line with the husband own. That she run another ministry. That's an issue. I'm not talking about far from here. One man died in his church. The wife woke up that she has a ministry. And they want her. You, your husband will become a widow. The man has a very prosperous ministry in Onisha. Because of the frustration of the woman, he moved into Lagos. So they are doing well. But the wife refused to give her support. She has a ministry. Now what stops you from combining your ministry and submitting to your husband? Because the Bible says women submit. 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 Some people say, ah, my husband has ministry. May I have women ministry? Of course, you can't have men ministry as a woman. It has to be ministry women own. Your husband has a church. They are yet to register the church. You want to register a women ministry? I have one. The husband has not registered the church. They are registering, what is it called now? Another thing altogether. I said, where are you people come together? Walk together as one. The Bible says you are one. But some people want to run seven in their marriages. And once you have seven heads, you have become a monster. Monstrous marriage. Fear. No wonder we have the increase of men who go to the garden in the city of Abuja. Because their home is refused to be a garden. It's a war front. So they stay back in town and they are eating fresh fish, roasted fish, dry fish, point and kill. And they will point. And they're able to point correctly the one they want. And they will kill for them. I went to see a man at Wuse too. The man was not around. So I waited at Jom Gombejuel Hotel. I saw a man. They brought one large fish. I think it was me and Ekes. Who look at the man. Would the man will be able to finish this fish? And when the man finish this kind of fish, you think, will he be able to eat at home? No, certainly no. There's nothing wrong in eating, no. But always remember that you have family back home. And there's nothing wrong that you are eating because you went there. You had them to make a second one. That you do what? That you take home. They will wrap it with original foil paper. So the heat will remain until you come back home. Hmm? Yeah. So taking this for granted. Learn to live with him. What does, what does he have passion for? What are, the, what are his vision before you met him? And now? What, are, what is the vision of your husband? What is the vision? What is the vision that the man has? This is uh, the reason why people should have courtship. People should have what? And let me tell you the approved courtship is between six months and two years. Active courtship. You discuss. You quarrel. You understand one another. No religious courtship. Courtship that you discuss, but you don't go to the man's house to sit down and sleep. You are free to go out, go to a restaurant, eat together. Watch how the lady eats. There are some girls, they were not taught table manners in their home. It is during courtship that you correct some things. How many of you are aware that table manners has destroyed marriage? Like table manner. Somebody is eating meat. I do like this. Um, um, yeah. They say, what is this? And no man wants that kind of a woman. Are, are you aware? <laughs> do you know there are some men who don't take their wife to a party? Because she will stain all her dresses with the food. No, it sounds funny to you, but I'm telling you what I've seen. Okay, the other, when we were praying yesterday, what did we talk about? Is it not toothpaste? Is it about toothpaste, Abby? Now, what I asked, there are people that when they want to, this is the toothpaste, when they want to press the cream, they go to the middle, press it, ma'am. Some men don't like it, some women don't like it. And yesterday, because it was Christian elders meeting, all of them, you know, some people open up. Somebody say, ah, I do it. I say, why do you do it? Then my wife also does the same thing. Then I will say, I was doing it before. Then I will say, any way is way. <laughs> and there are some people who don't like it. There are some people who, before this evening, as I was I pray from down. And that's what we do in our home. But some people go from the middle, bam, press it. And somebody say, eh, this woman has come again. And all of that. 
Do you know that some people don't even know how to sit? How to sit down? Do you know there are feminine posture of sitting down? Eh? Do you know? No, no, talk to me. Do you know? Are you aware? All right. Um, come. Carry up, Come. Bring one chair. That, this chair. Be fast, okay? When I was young like you, once Pastor called me, I had to be fast. You can't have waist pain now that you're still young. Keep the chair here. You see some lady, when they want to sit down, as soon as they arrive, bam, like this. Is it normal? How should they get a seat with your leg closed? And we do not know that some people are observing us. Nobody is putting you into bondage. But you are causing bad market for yourself. So during courtship period, you iron these things out. The dressing and all of that. Okay, look at my wife. When we entered into courtship, the background I came from, the scripture you know background, we don't believe in palming hair. We don't believe in this Bob Mali. All this wig that the people are putting today. I never believed it. But she came, she got born again, a love ward, that Christ Embassy, the same school where your hair Kilomer graduated. She got born again there. So they were doing it. But when we came together during courtship, when she's even going to salon, I will escort her. But gradually, gradually, she got to know what I believe in, and she stopped. If you come to the house and check our wedding photograph, she didn't perm her hair, she didn't make her hair, she combed it naturally. The only thing I learned is that she can wash the hair with shampoo, and I bought hand dry for her to be washing. But today, we are backslided into the world, she makes her hair, and all of that. Or maybe, is it that we have known better, but whichever one, the only thing that we were before, we are no longer there. There have been whether natural shift or divine shift, but we'll hear about the shift during the men's convention. But there have been a shift. <laughs> there have been what? We have shifted from where we were. So these are some of the things you learn during what? Courtship. I'm not talking about courtship by correspondence. Where you talk, you talk, has handled a case. The lady was complaining. The man is in London. The man is not calling me again. He's not calling me again. I said, are you aware that the man is doing a research work? He pays attention to his research work. He wants to finish. The man has exceeded the timing of his scholarship. His parents said, he's not calling me again. And like we used to call before. And even when I call, the man used to be cool. I said, OK, how many times do you call in a day? He said, eight times. I said, don't allow the man to fail the exam. Oh, no, no, Master. Why can't you call somebody eight times a day? What are you looking for? Even this one, the one call that I didn't complete before coming to church. Children talk, say, ah, that daddy is disturbing them with phone. Because the man who called to find out how the children are doing. Because children of business, this year they have changed. The man is called, concerned about, say, daddy is always disturbing calling. What is he looking for? We're all right. Even my children have, they have advised me that she stop calling her man. I said, I refuse. I said, I may not call two of you who assume to have grown, but this is Amarobudu. I'll be calling her. How can you not call your child to find out how the child is doing? What kind of independence is like that? Even when Nigeria become free from UK, don't you have British in Nigeria? Are they not visiting? They talk of parents. They don't become over independent. Courtship, not by correspondent, but through Christian courtship. You know one another, you get adjusted before you, you get married. You may not know all about the man, but you will get to a level. Now, know something, the vision of the man and support him. Also find out what are his fears, and how can you help him overcome them, or actualize his vision. Do you know there's a woman in the Bible. I love her boldness, but I don't, love, I, didn't, I don't like her end action and reaction. Her name is Jezebel. She would have done better. She would have entered with persuasion, and she possibly would have gotten the land from Naboth. 
We are reading 1 King chapter 21, verse 1 to 7. 1 King 21, 1 to 7. And it came to pass after these things that Nabal the Jezreelite had what? A vineyard, which was in Jezreel, had by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. What he say is that the vineyard is close, the next plot of land. To who? To the palace. No, verse 2. And then I spoke unto Nabot, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is where? Near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the word of it in money. Church, is there anything wrong in the statement of Ahab here? Eh? Is there anything wrong? If government of the day are paying compensation to people's property, are we going to have a problem? No, we are not going to have a problem. But look at what happened in verse 3. And I was said to her, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And I have come unto his house, heavy and displeased, because of the word which Nabal the Jezreelite has spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, O oh God, why is your spirit so sad that he refused to eat food? Verse 6. And he said unto her, Uncle Macanabot, the Jezreelite. He said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money or earth. If it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. Look at verse 7. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Ha! Does thou now go by the kingdom of Israel? Are you no longer the king? Now, the woman brought to his consciousness his position and his power. If you have a good wife, you are discouraged. He said, Why? Said, what is the problem? God is still in heaven. I'm going to help you out. But some people say, ah, you are finished. You're the king that cannot. I pity you. When Jezebel and his brothers come, you will leave this seat. And the man will become afraid of more. But Jezebel encouraged him. But Jezebel did what? And said, arise. And did what? And eat bread. And let your heart be what? As at that time, has he gotten the vineyard? If that woman had stopped there and had gone to Naboth and his family and said, Oh, God, you are our neighbor. Have we ever quarreled? He said, No. My husband is dying because of this land. A land, he said, he'll give you something better. He's still within the same vicinity. Make choice. Anywhere you want, the man is the king. Now, with such persuasion, do you think Naboth would have accepted? Yes, he would have accepted. But he said, No. She went, started well, and ended badly. And now said, instead of persuading people, he said, I'm going to arrange for men. What stop her from arranging for those men to persuade Nabot? But they went and lied against Nabot, and Nabot was killed. He said, I will give thee the vineyard of Nabot, the Jezreelite. That's it. Let's see. So she wrote letters in her heart's name. I see them with his seal. I send the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. There are some evil that people get into that they don't need to get into if they will consult God and follow it in a godly way. Hallelujah. Number one, understand your spouse. Number two, learn how to live with him. Number three, Humble yourself before him. The problem we have today is that a lot of women are on top of their camels, sitting on the camels of their certificate, sitting on the camels of their beauty. When they look at themselves on the mirror, they will do the hair like this. I'm sure you know that this generation, they deliberately make hairs that cover the eye so that it can be thrown several times before the day goes out. Through of us. Is it not deliberate? 
It's deliberate. They make it so that they can come this way, that you do like this, or you do like this. You just do like Travigator, whether 100 times before the day goes on, and all of that, which they are comfortable. Some people are so beautiful that their beauty enters their head. Some people are so educated or from wealthy family that they no longer respect their husband. Their heart is so strong. It's after all, what am I getting in this marriage? Something deceives her and tells her that if she leaves this marriage, that somebody else, somebody somewhere, will be waiting to marry her. But can I give you the news that you may not like? You, you are free to leave. But going into that man's house, you become a second-hand wife. Three of us. You become what? A Belgian wife. Tokumba. You're no longer brand new. Are you following? But your husband that you are living, nobody may refer to him as a Tokumba husband. Because chauvinism is so much in the world. Men consider this world the world of men. Are you aware? Eh? That's why most of professions that give money in those days, engineering, architecture, are for who? For men. But today, women are venturing into it. But see, the world still see the men still see the world and the men's world. The women's world are yet to be created. So we need to be very careful on what we do. Though Christianity and the church may not support it, but we need to be very careful. Let's see the scripture. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 64. Genesis 24 and verse 64. A wealthy man by the name Abraham went to marry a wife for the son from another wealthy home. Now, is it possible the way they carry camel? How many of us have seen camel before? Sanda, you have lived in Sokoto, am I correct? They use camel to carry load. Now, can the load that camel carry fuel a pickup? In some instances, yes. Eh? Yes, it can. Now, if you read that scripture very well, about 10 camel followed the servant of Abraham to go marry Rebecca. Medina, this man was very rich. And that shows us the guidance for marriage. That every marriage that we work traditionally, people should go not less than 10 to witness it. Hello? Because as I went to Edo, I handled a case. A man want to marry a woman, and the father of the man said no. Our daughter will not marry your son because our son is a medical doctor. But the, the lady in question is a, is, a, is a lab scientist. And she's doing well, heavily paid, because she works with multinational. But after one, two, three years, suddenly from nowhere, the young man came that the father has agreed. But they didn't know that they rented somebody. I said, they did what? You know how they rent car for program? They rented a man, a woman, a few persons, and they came. They said, one of your father, they said, my father is sick. They just say, this is what you represent. And once you see an elderly man from your place, that's how they got married. But the father of the boy said, will not agree. Came to that town, went to the marriage registry, brought a senior advocate. They should bring the certificate. They want to tear it and all of that. And the issue is that because of that, they have not even gotten children. Don't get into marriage that is full of controversy. But there's something that happened here. Rebecca was honored. They were coming in their convoy. But look at verse 64. As they were arriving, Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, what did she do? Eh? Now, just picture a girl of our generation that they brought in a convoy of cars. Ten Mezdis Camel. Not Benz. Mezdis what? Camels. 
convoy of high class car. We saw him blowing. The girl will tap the glass. I said, that's my husband. She will ask them to stop. And we wait for Isaac to do what? To come and say, I welcome my wife. But what did she do? What did she do? She came down. And when she came down, what did she do? What is the process of seeing someone? Number one is to come down. As she came down, she moved. Is there any other verse after this? For she has said unto the servant, What man is it that walketh in the field to meet us? Can you see that? Isaac played his role. And what did she do? In the marriage that we walk, Isaac was walking towards them, and the lady did what? Came down. The implication of her coming down is that she left that her high and lofty place, that exalted position, that beauty, that wealth, that family background, that thing that makes your heart to swell. You need to come down from it if your marriage must work. If your marriage must work. Now your beauty that entered your head. Now your English that you see you are the only one that can speak. That when you are quarreling with your husband, you confuse him with English. That even when you abuse him, he didn't know that you abused him. He think you are telling him congratulations. Say you are saucy and stupid. The man said, what did you say? Me is stupid. What is that? What is it? But the man didn't go to school. He said, I have stupid, but what is the other one? He said, okay, if he's stupid, I will draw it. But he still left saucy there. But the man doesn't know. What is that thing that's making you to brag? Making your heart to swear? Come down from it. Tell your neighbor, come down. Say it again. Say it again. Number four, as a round of, agree with that man as you know him and resolve conflicting expectations. You know, people get into marriage with high expectations. Particular people who are coming from home where there are problems. Your father and mother are always quarreling, so you wish that you should leave that home. Or the economic situation of your family, father, mother, is not wonderful, so you wish that you should go out. But some people have gone out and they discover they have gone from frying pan to where? To fire. We have many people in Kujia who have said they have family where they're coming from. They actually wanted to leave with the hope of getting a better man and eventually got to know that the man they eventually got is like their father or worse than their father or two times or three times or ten times more than their father. What they are running away from? They ran into it. Why not sit down? Why not agree? Sit down on a round table, resolve the conflicting expectation. Somebody say, I thought. No, stop thinking and become real. Remove the mask. Don't wear masquerade to a man's house. Be yourself. Be real. Tell your neighbor, be real. Be real. Be real. Remove that mask. Stop living a fake life. Remove that mask. Come down the way you are. I went to talk to some people that were arrested. Is it, what is it, is it for CID now? Now in area 10. Because we said for a long time, we came down to eat. You want to be there. I met one lady. She was eating. And they put the apple for her on this side. She had the woman to put her. Good. I told her, I said, I like your boldness. Not this one that girls pretend they don't eat. And some of them have ulcer. Some actually hide to eat and eat very well. I said, but for you to be bold and load your apple and balance, say God will bless you. Hallelujah. Remove the mask. I said, remove what? Remove the mask. Resolve the conflicts. Do you know that people who are carrying you, 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 a, a woman is going. When the man said that, as soon as I get into marriage, my husband is going to get a car for me. And the man is a man who is project-driven. 
His desire is to get a house first. And your own is to get a car. So as soon as money comes, what is your expectation? What is the man's expectation? What will eventually happen? Conflict. Sit down and resolve the conflict. Agree. And this work should have been done during your courtship period. Hallelujah. Handle your incompatibility through compassionate compromise. Let them be here, let them be there. You see what Isaac and Rebecca did? What did Rebecca do? She came down. What did Isaac do? He was walking towards her. There should be a compromise. Come out of that prison that this is the way I must do it. If it's not my own way, we will break this plate. Madam, how many plates will you break? If you break all your plates, you'll be eating on the ground. Though. Or anytime they want to serve food, you do your hand like this. Whether the rice is hot, they'll give you be eating it like that. Because all your food can be your father's rice. They will use paper, green paper to serve. And many people today are suffering because they refuse to resolve their conflict. A woman is handling her finances separately, the man is handling his own. And they are making double expenditures. And they grow without achieving anything. There are studies of marriage. Your first time, the second level, the third level, and some people will get old without building houses for themselves. And it is not a good thing for a man to be 60 in a town without a house of his own. It's not a good thing for a man to retire from any kind of service. That is why there are suburbs like Peggy, like Wagwalada, like Maraba, like Kubo, not Kuje, Kuje is a big town. You must get a land, no matter how small. You must know the difference between an asset and a liability. How many of you know that car is a liability? Huh? Car is a liability. You maintain it. But house is an asset. You can sell it any time. So if there are such conflict, you must resolve it. My wife, I got to know long ago, she's a woman who doesn't like to live overseas. No matter how worthy you become. Thank God that I'm a pastor. Because if I'm not, and I'm an ambassador, they say Sam Obodo is Nigerian ambassador to the US. We may have two homes, though I would have begged her for the few years we're going to work in the US. Come and live with me. But long ago, so I'm not even thinking of living there. Now, if you have such, it may be a problem. And you have seen people who say their wife, you know, to pass overseas, or do, that they have any issues in their marriage. So you must resolve this conflict. Your conflict may be in child training. The way you bring up your children, you have special interest on a particular one. I don't have interest in the other one. Africans have problems. Our black color is affecting our mindset. You name a child after your mother. And your wife doesn't like your mother. So the way to beat you is to beat that child. Transfer of aggression. Because when they beat the child, you will be offended. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And usually I tell people the simple way to do it is to give your child two names. Name the child, your mother and your wife. It will stop, it will reduce the problem. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, and we'll be done for today. Genesis 2, 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be what? I will make him and help meet for him, and help meet for him. Marriage is meant for what? Companionship. Everybody say companionship. Say it again. The day you stop enjoying the company of your wife or your husband, your marriage is dead. Write it. The day you stop enjoying the company of your wife or your husband, or if you like, the day you stop enjoying the company of your spouse, your marriage is dead. To so do everything possible to make sure you enjoy the company of one another. Because God said it is not good for the man to be alone. Then why do you want to be alone? Some people say, leave me alone, leave me alone. God said, go to him that is alone. Because children have not grown to read the Bible. 
Some of them, that's why when, when they do something, they shout, they say, leave me alone, leave me alone. Tell them the Bible say, what to him and say, alone. You should stop saying, leave me alone. You stay with the other brother. What do you mean? You are even that to say, leave me alone. Something is wrong with you. How can you be alone? God said, I don't want any man to be alone. The book of Ecclesiastes says, if your body is itching, somebody will do it. How many of you have seen plastic finger? This uh, uh, plastic finger. Let me see your hand, brother. All right, put your hand there. How many of you have it? Let me see your hand. <laughs> it's good and not good, though. I said, it's what? Because it will reduce the number of time you tell your husband to help you scratch your back. You feel that you don't need him. It's a plastic hand. And plastic hand does not have affection. A plastic hand does not, you can't tell the plastic hand, and the thing is paining me because it doesn't have ear. But you open your husband and say, Do you know why? And the man says, Do you know why? You are free to use your plastic hand, bro, but let the plastic hand not replace your husband's hand. Because somebody went to buy Sisulaja, they gave my wife, have you? They somebody gave her. <clears throat> but I see that plastic hand as a suspect. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us. Please learn to appreciate your spouse. Understand your husband. Know that you have only one life to live. And if you miss it, you have missed it forever. The Lord will help us. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will take questions. The next five minutes will be questions. You have a question? Can I see your hand up? If you have a question, let me see your hand. Or you want to write, you can write it. But those who have, you can raise your hand, we'll answer your question now. All right. Now, are we ready to learn and know more about our husband? Please go home and do it, and the Lord will help you. I will be upstanding as we pray. I will be upstanding as we pray. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, teach me what I need to know about my spouse. Help me not to walk in ignorance. For men and women have walked in ignorance, have gone to hell, and they are left in the congregation of the dead. O oh God of heaven, help me to live with understanding. Teach me what I need to know. Pray now in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. Pray like somebody that wants to change your marriage. Don't just see your heart. Say, I've chosen to live my life. Anything that will happen, let it happen. No. There's no wisdom in that. <laughs> 